are not afraid to burn the house down and they were burning the cities down, right? So I'm showing you this because I want you to understand that these are days of violence that we live in and how much more the coming of the Son of Man will be that the Bible warns us of. So, uh, you know, putting some pictures and some understanding of this, there's not a whole lot, a lot of scripture I'm going to go through, and we're going to see just how far I get with this. Hopefully, if I get it all finished, that'll be a blessing. If not, uh, it'll be a blessing, but it'll, the rest of your blessing will have to be this afternoon, because I, I may not, I got a lot of scripture in here, because I want to talk about this. I want to, I don't want to be fast with this. I, I want to really, because, you know, if you're not careful, what you'll look at is all the, the giants, the other things that are talked about in this portion of Scripture, the sons of God, the daughters of men. But you'll miss exactly man's depravity right here and what God talks about, the absolute violence that had covered the earth at the time. So God gives us some hints to that. And this is the violence of man. And he was helped by devils, of course, just like he's helped today by devils to commit violence against the Lord. There's a rebellion against God. There is. Did you know that? I hope you understand that. Most men live in rebellion to God. This is an example of that, of that violence as well. Uh, they burnt this whole complex down right here. They just burnt it right to the ground right here. I mean, this is, this is, these are actual, this is actually there. This is actually Minneapolis. This is not, this is not uh, somewhere else in the world. This is right in our backyard, so to speak, right? So it, it's right there. This is, this is real. Now, what's the Bible say about that? The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So, very, very clearly, God says the earth is corrupt, and the earth was filled with violence. Filled with violence. That's, a, that's very powerful. When you study violence in the Bible, my phone's going on, or my watch is trying to talk to me. Let's see, let's... Yeah, do not disturb for like ever, thanks. All right. <laughs> Genesis chapter 6, verse number 12. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted its way, his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, listen, he says it again. He says it twice. Now that's important. God says it twice. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, there's a, there's a lot of things that are going on in this verse. We're not going to focus on the, 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 the devils or the fallen angels or any of those other things. We're going to focus on man's depravity here. For the earth is filled with violence through them. This whole world was filled with violence at the time of Noah. Now, there's some hints to that, and God's going to give us some to exactly what those times were like. So we're going to kind of look at that. Uh, but... You understand violence in the scriptures. If you study it, God's very clear. God hates violence. Now, Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, verse number 26, and it was as, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. One day, God's going to do the same thing again only with fire. God's going to come and he's going to destroy them. He's going to destroy the earth and he's going to melt it down with fervent heat and he's going to remake it again, right? Luke 17, 21, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. So here's our cue or our clue, excuse me. Here's our clue right here. Just as in the days of Noah, likewise in the days of Lot. So you have to do a comparison of Sodom and Gomorrah, and you have to do a comparison of Lot at the time, what was going on there, right? And what was going on in, uh, in the days of Noah at the same time, because Jesus makes that comparison. He tells you to look at this. He says, likewise also. So here's your clue. This means that you have to be a Bible student and you study and you look and see, well, what were the days of Lot like? What were the days of Noah like? What exactly is the Lord trying to tell us, right? He says here, likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Sodom was a violent place. And if you ever, if you ever meet uh, uh, and deal with homosexuals or transgenders or anything, they're very violent people. Violent. 
Don't ever let them fool you with a, with a, with some kind of a, a soft facade. They're violent. They're the same people that told my 75-year-old dad that they'd rape him over a trash can. Now I'm going to say some real things to you, and I'm going to I'm going to try to be as discreet as I can. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be um, provocative in any way. I'm just telling you the truth. That's what it is. That's who they are. That's what they believe and that's what they hold to. And by the way, you're right. You won't find 90% of the preachers in Minnesota. They'll say anything like was just said to you right there. And that's including the limp wristed Baptist ones that won't preach against sin. Amen. That won't deal with it hard and hate it. Amen. You got to hate it. Amen. And yeah, I'm screaming. Wake up. Amen. <laughs> Here's Sodom. Here's the fire that came down. By the way, God hates sin. If you think God loves your sin and God's okay with your sin and God's okay with your lustful thoughts, God's okay with your anger, wrath, and malice, and God's just okay with that. No, he's not. He burnt people up alive and hates it. And by the way, that's still the same God. If you think Jesus Christ is different, then you don't know the Bible. Because that's the same God that hates your sin and my sin. He absolutely hates it. God hates your sin. He doesn't love it. It's not, it, it, he, doesn't, he doesn't wink at it. God hates it. He says rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. God hates it. He's not happy with sin. He destroyed the whole world for it. He drowned it a whole world. He drowned a whole world for sin. Do you understand that? For violence. He drowned a whole world. I mean, I want you to think about that for a second. Let that sink into your heart today. And by the way, there aren't any church-sanctified sins either. Amen. Sin is sin, and God hates it. Remember that. If you're a youth here, and you're young, and you think, well, I haven't done those things they, they, those people have done, I know. Thank God. That's why we're trying to keep you from them. But that's why you have to understand, you have a little depraved nature, and, you're, and your tongue and your heart is set on the flames of hell. You're just as guilty as they are. Amen. Amen. Just as guilty as they are. Why? Because you're a fallen creature and you love your sin, right? And you need Jesus Christ to change your heart. Amen. So here's, here's Lot, right? Here's a depiction of Lot. His daughter's taken off. There's the angels. There's the city frying. What you think about the days of Lot when you think about the days of Noah? I want you to think about how much God hates sin. By the way, let me tell you something. You better hate your sin more than you do the pedophiles down the road. Amen. Let me just tell you that right now. You and I, we can fall into a trap. We can see very heinous and wicked men, and we can, we can hate their sin more than we do ours. You ought to hate their sin, but you better hate yours too. Because you know the quickest way for you to fall into any sin is for you not to hate your own, but to hate your neighbors. Amen. You and I have to watch that. We've got to hate the corruption of our own hearts and take it to God and repent of it and get it right and put it down. Amen. Cast it down. Now, on to more pleasant things for a second. Uh, this is a timeline of biblical events from creation. So this, this shows the, the, the lineage. By the way, this is done by Usher. Uh, James Usher, his book, okay, uh, he did this, this lineage, okay, and he, he traced the, he used the Bible, by the way, Usher has the, the most, the, the best timeline of world history of anybody, why is that? Because he used the Bible, Amen. that, that's, that's why, like there's no other reason why, it's just because he used the Bible, he just took the ages and the dates and, and the time of men, and th that's what he did, and he believed God, that's a marvelous thing if you believe God, isn't it? It's just a wonderful thing if you just believe God's word and you just say, well, that's what God's word says, right? But look here, he, he, he dates them all. He gets all the way down here. So the, the flood started when Noah was 600, which was the year, was, was 1,656 years away from the beginning. That's, how, that's, that's all the time that it took for the whole world to become violent and corrupt before God. I want you to think about men living. Think, how bad were the days of Noah? Well, let me ask you a question. How bad, you know how bad you and I can be as lost people. You know how bad, when we were lost and dead in sins, how bad we were. We know, we, we know that. We know that, that a man can live an average of 70 years, right? And a man lives an average of 70 years, how bad he is. Could you imagine a man living an average of 900 years and how bad he could become? 
how wicked he could become, how vile he could become in that time, how wise he would become and how cunning he would become and how he'd be able to deceive people and the, and the wickedness that he could do. Think about that. So God shortened man's days because of that. God purposely shortened man's days due to that. Purposely did that. That was on purpose, right? Does the Bible give us some clues to that? And what is the biblical definition of violence? That's what we're going to look at. Uh, we just talked about this. And we understand, hey, there were giants on the earth. They were big and ugly. There were some wicked things going on. There were fallen angels. And we talked about that a little bit. We understand there were fallen angels. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and they were manipulating DNA. We talked about that in the weeks past. We talked about how they were manipulating DNA. They were messing with it. They were messing with the genes like they're doing right now. And uh, they've got gene editing tools. And they're doing all those other things, right? So we, we know that those things are coming to pass. But what about the violence? What about the violence that Jesus, that, that God spoke twice about in that same verse? He said, I'm going to destroy them, and it's, it's for their violence. They're violent people. Twice he said that. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established, right? God's word said twice. They're violent people. They were violent people. They were violent. Very violent. We looked at these scriptures here. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. We talked about that. The end of all flesh has come before me, said the Lord, for the earth is filled with violence. Remember, one thing, children and older children, God is love, but God also hates. Amen. The Bible doesn't merely say that God just hates violence, but he hates the man who loves violence. God hates people. I want you to understand that. Like, they, that's totally foreign to people right now because you're told in your little Lutheran church that God loves everybody. And you're told that, and you're, by the way, you're told that in most Baptist churches too, that God loves everybody and has a wonderful plan for your life. Uh, no, God doesn't throw people that he loves in hell. He throws people that he hates in hell. I'm going to say that to you again. God doesn't throw people he loves in hell. He throws people he hates in hell. Amen. See, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? That love is to be found in Christ. God's one act of love to the world, besides his other graces that he gives to the world in feeding man and clothing man and putting sun on man's back so he doesn't uh, freeze to death, right? Or withholding the power of the sun so you don't fry like bacon on a sidewalk. Amen! Right? So anyway, but, but God also hates. God, God hates. Most people won't talk to you about that. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, uh, an interruption. That's like a disturbance to most people's theology today, to tell them that God hates. Well, I'm here to tell you, that's the same God, and he hates. And when Jesus comes back, he's not going to be the lamb licking the hand that slayed him. That's not what he's going to be. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah, and he's going to roar. And when he roars, he's going to send fire. And when he sends fire, he's going to burn them up. That's the judgment of God, friend. That's the God I serve. Amen. He is holy and he is righteous and he is true. Amen. You better understand God's holy and you're not. Amen. That's the difference. And I'm not one of these little theologians that thinks I got to explain to you or like those other guys on there that like to eloquently say to you and try to explain to you and, and defend God in so many ways. I'm not going to defend God. Amen. I'm not, I don't have to defend God. God's just and holy, and he's right to throw us in hell. Amen. He's right, and he's merciful and gracious to send forth his son to die on the cross for your sins. But if you reject him, you deserve to go to hell. Amen. You absolutely do. Right? That's right. That's the Bible. That's God's word. That's the God I serve because he's holy. Man. Yeah, God's holy. That's, and God hates the man who loves violence. Amen. Look, at your, look at Psalm 11. I don't know if I put that in there. Let's look at Psalm 11. That's our memorization verse, verses this week, right? Psalm 11. Well, some of you anyway, if you memorize it. Let's show you this, what, what God says about this. Let's see. The, verse number five. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Hmm. They didn't teach me that in Theology 101. Well, I know. It's not comfortable. 
it's not comfortable. It's not exactly in the handbook of soul winning by, what's that guy, what was that one guy's name that shook everybody's hand and got them all saved? Carl, what? Hatch, yeah, the Carl Hatch squeeze. Yeah, it's not, it's not comfortable to tell people that, right? But remember, that's the same God that drowned the whole world. Look, I'm going to preach to you the righteousness of God and that he hates sin. And, and I, I, I can't sugarcoat sin for you. I can't, I can't do that and be true to God's word. I can't sugarcoat my own and I can't sugarcoat anybody else's, right? We got to speak it plain, right? So people understand it. God drowned the whole world. Boy, if you haven't listened, by the way, to that, what was the name of that? Sights and Sounds of the Flood. You ought to listen to that. Didn't we put a video together that loop? You ought to listen to that. If you haven't watched that video, go watch that video, Sights and Sounds of the Flood. Go, go just, just listen to it. Psalm 711, we talked about God, or we didn't talk about, but we will now. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. God has a class for the wicked. Those are the lost. They're the wicked. You're either a son of God or a child of hell. There is no in between. Psalm 712. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. This is what God does. This is who God is, more importantly. This is who the God of the Bible is. See, everybody wants to paint Jesus as different than God. Like, Jesus, you know, he kind of was the chilled out version of God in the New Testament. He just came in. No, 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 no. No. Right. Some kind of hippie, right? Some kind of Buddhist God. No, that's not, that's not the God of the Bible. And by the way, if somebody told you that was God, they lied to you. And I'm preaching this on the authority of the scriptures. I'm not giving you what, what, you, what you want to hear or what I want to say. I, I'm not dressed up in, in, in nice long robes and phylacteries, and I'm not serving you some little cracker and some little wafer God and telling you some false gospel. I'm telling you God's angry with the wicked, That's right. and God is going to slay them. Amen. And you need Jesus Christ to save your soul. And praise be to God, he saved mine all those years ago. Amen. And praise be to God, he saved many of you all those years ago as well. But if you're not saved, you better get saved because that's the same God. Amen. Psalm 5.5. 5, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So... Pastor, you must be taking that out of context because you had one verse over there. No, nope, here's more. Here's more. Here's, here's more. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor. You know what that means? Hatefully detesting. Hatefully that means the lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man who's the bloody and deceitful man the violent man it's the lost man that sheds innocent blood he's the bloody and deceitful man right what is violence well i'll give you webster's then i'm going to give you i'll give you god's definition <laughs> Outrage, unjust force, crimes of all kinds, the earth was filled with violence, eagerness, vehemence, injury, hurt. The Bible says do violence to no man. Ravishment, rape. There's a clue to the days of Noah, right? To do violence to or on, to attack, to murder. But as it seems did violence on herself, to do violence to, to outrage, to force, to injure. He does violence to his own opinions. That's another form of the word. To assault, to injure, also to bring by violence. That's what the world was filled with. That's what it's being filled with now. Still is, right? But it's getting worse. All heading down that road to eternity, right? God hated it so much, he fried them all. People don't like to hear that. You know, most people today, when they preach, they preach messages. They, they, they won't preach them like this with that, with that urgency, with that, with that, that, that um, the strength of God's holy nature. 
and, and like like unapologetically looking at people and, 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 and say, look, you're in trouble with God. If you don't get right with God, you're in trouble. And I'm not going to apologize for who God is. I'm not going to try to. Ex- I'm not going to try to talk the uh, the holiness of God. I'm not going to try to explain away the holiness of God. No, God's holy and He hates sin, and that's why He fried people, and that's why He's going to fry people again, and that's why He drowned the whole world, and He's going to do it again. He's going to fry him again. Right? God's going to do it again. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse number 6, Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Look, here's a clue. Their works are works of iniquity. Now, we're going to break these verses down in Isaiah 59, 6, so we're going to slow down a little bit here. Take a deep breath. All right. Um, Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. So there are, there are some religious today that cover up their works. We heard about recently the man that did heinous things, right? We hear about that. What the, Their works, they, co- they shall cover themselves. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. They can't cover them up. Their works are works of iniquity. And the act of violence is in their hands, right? Murderous violence in their hands. Their feet, what, do the violent man do? what does the violent man do? Their feet run to evil. They run to do evil. They seek it out. They run to do it. That's what they do. They absolutely run to do evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Right? What is that? Well, that innocent blood's interesting. We're going to talk about that all the way through this. But that's an important part of why God judges the world. That's why God destroys people. Innocent blood being shed. That's why God kills people for that. God ends civilizations. God ends nations for that. God melts nations down because of that. He hates it. But their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. That's, That's your baby murdering factories in America. And all the politicians that try to They're just a bunch of cowards. They're just a bunch of paid off cowards. I don't care if they have an R or if they have a D. They are paid off little cowards because they won't just call it what it is. They're worried about what other people think about them. They're worried about how they're gonna sound. And I'm like, well, you got a building right over there that they're cooking babies in. And you're trying to, you're trying to figure out a sweet way to say that. Well, hey, sunshine, how about you just tell them they're murdering babies? How about you just look at it and say, stop killing babies. Stop murdering babies. You bunch of butchers. But no, we pay them and give them $200,000 a year salaries and put them in Congress and then let them play games and let them draw income off of it. And then all of them every two years, every four years, come around and be like, we're going to end abortion. you got to vote for us. Give us all your money, you big dummies. And everybody's like, sure, I'll give it to you. I ain't giving you no money. You're a bunch of liars. You don't do nothing. You know what does more for abortion? You know what does more for baby murder? Standing outside there and preaching to people. Preaching this gospel and this message right here I'm preaching. That does more. And sounding crazy and getting up and saying, why are you so frantic and crazy? I don't know, because they're cooking babies over there. That's why. I don't know. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's because they're killing people and everybody all's in a stupor and they're too busy watching pornography and playing video games to care. Amen. Maybe that's why. Maybe you ought to get fired up and yell about something. Maybe you ought to care enough to say something. Man, I'm fired up today. I'm telling you what, I just am. I feel like I could do this for about four hours right now. Yeah, amen. Their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. It's all they have. What did Jesus tell us? Or what did God tell us? Who's Jesus? In Genesis chapter 6, what did he say to us? He said the thoughts of their heart were only evil continually. What's this? Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. They're not casting them down. By the way, when you have a problem with your thoughts, take them to the Lord. The first place every thought ought to be taken is to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Every thought. And you're going to have some that are really bad sometimes. And sometimes you're going to have a flood that comes in of bad thoughts. And you know what you have to do with them? Take them to Jesus. Is this a biblical thought? No. Then cast it down. Period. I don't have to discover where it came from. I don't have to search out for what 
how, how many hugs my mom gave me when I was three years old. I don't have to think about any of those things. What do I have to do? Cast them down. Amen. Yeah, or see a shrink, right? I, I, yeah, what do, I, what do I have to do? Cast them down. That's what I do. Not feed the fire. Amen. Cast them down and move forward and get your mind in a different direction. And you have that power by the Holy Ghost. You have that power. You have to use it. If you're a child of God and you're saved here and you've been blood washed and you've got the Spirit of God in you, then you have the power to do that. God's given it to you. And he's given you the way and means. Stop being lazy and making excuses. Do it. I get, you know, I get sick of hearing people say, oh, I'm trying. Don't you tell me you're trying. You do it. Because when you want to do something, you don't try it. You do it. Don't you? Isn't that right? You do it because you want to do it. I can't stop every evil thought from coming. Believe me, I had, I had times when my mind was so immersed with it, and not because I was looking at evil either, but my brains were broken and messed up, and every thought of my head was bad, only evil it felt like continually, and I had to combat it constantly with the Bible, constantly with the truth, constantly with a, a barrage of attacks right? It happens. I can't control that, but what I can do is put it down in the Spirit of God. That's what I can do, right? There's a difference in temptation and yielding to temptation, or yielding is sin. Amen! This is some good theology for you. It's going to help you. Their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. See, violent men and violent women, they wasting, I mean, all they, they leave a trail of waste, of, of, of destruction. Have you ever met them? There's mothers like that. There's fathers like that. There's family members that you have. Like, every, you just turn around, it's like, there's like a whole city blown up behind them. Like, they, like every, every relationship they ever get to, they, they ruin it and they destroy the people in it they just they're, they're people say people talk about toxic relationships well it's not toxic it's beyond that they are completely blown out of the water destroyed and they destroy the lives i've seen people i've seen violent men turn women so insane that they hang themselves i, I i've seen it I, I play with their minds so much, or vice versa. Women uh, destroying their husband's minds, destroying their husband. Like, like their husband can't, they can't be a man, can't stand up to be a man because the wife has completely beat them down to nothing and destroyed them. I've watched it. They're violent people that do that. That's what they are. No, don't, don't, it doesn't matter if they cover themselves with their works. They're still violent. But they're violent people. They're destructive people. That's what that means when it says that. It's violent and destructive people. Man, this didn't seem so. When I put these together, Brother Andrew, they see, it didn't seem like it was so, uh, um, so fiery like this, but I chose red for a purpose, so there you go. Uh, amen. Wasting and destruction in their past. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They don't care. Full steam ahead, destroy anything in front of them, destroy their family, destroy their children, destroy, de destroy anybody and anything they possibly can because they're violent people. That's what violent people do. They don't care. Their paths are destruction. They just, that's the way they are. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Don't follow a violent man. Don't follow a violent woman. Stay away from them. Rid yourself of them. Don't be around them. Don't follow their paths and don't follow their ways. Their destruction. Jeremiah 22, 3 tells us about those days of violence. Thus saith the Lord, execute ye judgment and righteousness and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor and do no wrong. Do no violence to the stranger. Amen. The fatherless, nor the widow. You know, the Bible talks about the fatherless and the widow over and over and over and over again. Warns us about how to treat the fatherless and the widow. And the stranger, by the way. Right? But it says over and over again, the fatherless, nor the widow. Fatherless, nor the widow. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the fatherless and the widow, they don't have a man over them. You want to know how much patience it takes to pass through the fatherless and the widow? A lot. I'll just be honest with you. I love them, but it's a lot of patience. It takes a lot of patience.
Because when a woman doesn't have a husband over her or a father over her, it is a challenge. It is a challenge, a big challenge and a big test of patience. <laughs> it's a big test of patience. Why? Well, imagine what you'd be like if you didn't have a husband. And then think about going through this life like that. There are challenges with it. Hey, Ben. But there's a way that we're to treat the fatherless and the widow. The Bible gives us instructions about that. To be very patient. Micah 6.12, for the rich men thereof are full of violence. Oh, really? Well, yeah, like who do you think is making all this money right now over bombing, I don't know, Ukraine and other places like that and going to war? Who do you think is making money on that? Me. Yeah, not me. Well, we're not. I just, I just went to the gas pump. Yeah, I didn't make any money there. <laughs> right? I didn't. I, I ain't doing no better. Right? Right? Go to the grocery store. I ain't getting rich off that. Right? Somebody is. Jeff Bezos is. Right? Facebook is. Mark Zuckerberg is. Right? All those other men are making billions of dollars. What is it? Lockheed and Martin? Uh, all, these other, uh, all these other war machine companies? Four companies that make all the money and get billion dollar con like they're making money. Right? Hey, you know how everybody thinks Zelensky's a hero? Yeah, he's worth a hundred million dollars. Somebody's paying him very well to do what he's doing. Oh. Pretty good money for a comedian. Pretty good money for a comedian, yeah, that's right. But I'll save that for Tuesday's broadcast, possibly. So Micah 2-1. I mean, they kicked off of YouTube again. Uh, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. What do violent men do? Uh, they devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. That's what violent men do. They think about the evil that they can plot and they can do, right? So some of those men that are staying up all night, yeah, they ain't studying the Bible, right? What are they doing? This. Woe to them devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. They're thinking about evil they can do. You're thinking about what they can do to, like, some people actually plot and plan and practice evil. When the morning is light, they practice it. Right? They, they conjure it up all night, and then they practice it during the day. How they're going to devise their plan, how they're going to work their, their mojo, right? They practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence. Oh, well, what's that? Poppy fields, yeah. Um, over in Afghanistan with the help of the United States military? Nah, America, um, right? This is why people hate me. Uh, one, this one, yeah. But all I gotta say is don't hate just prove it wrong, Amen. and I'll be waiting for you to do it. Yeah, just follow the money, and you'll figure out why we're in wars. You'll figure out why. Biden's ratings were tanked so bad. So what do we do? I think it's time to bomb somebody. Time to drop some democracy on somebody. Time to go to war with Putin. He's the next big devil. Right? Why? Because they're violent people, and all they think about is violence. Right? Yeah. They covet fields and they take them by violence. See, see, I'll tell you what a lot of people don't like. They don't like people, they don't like preachers or people taking the Bible and applying them right to today, like what you're going through today. Well, that's why God gave it to me. That's why he gave us this book. He didn't write this uh, solely for the people that in the, in the time in which it was given, this book is written in heaven. Amen. This book is eternal. Mm -hmm. That's why he gave it to us. Right. So for me to take it and preach it and help you to apply it to your life today, right? That's why, to get through today's struggles, to get through tonight when you, want, you, when you feel like you wanna die. That's what it's for. Amen, and don't I know it. And they covet the fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house. Even a man and his heritage, right? Stole it from him, right? 
and now they're at, now they're now they're in the White House still doing it, right? Yeah, we're gonna press a man in his house, right? Yep, still Bible times. Second Kings twenty one six. What did God do to Manasseh? Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much. Mm -hmm. Look what it says here. Till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. What is that? Well, that shedding of innocent blood is violence. That's what God calls violence. It's very violent behavior. He shed innocent blood. He killed people that did nothing to him. Right? He stole their money, stole their property probably, and, and killed them. And who knows? We don't know exactly everything he did. But he filled, he filled Jerusalem from one end to another, just slaying people that serve the Lord, killing them. Right? And, he, and uh, anyway, we'll get to more verses about him. Beside his sin wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, setting up false gods and worshiping them and bowing down to them and serving them. Right? Manasseh, he, he gave his, man, I think I'm almost done. Am I almost done? What, what slide am I on? Oh, man, halfway. Sorry, you're not getting out of that easy. All right. Uh, but Manasseh, the Bible talks about uh, he sacrificed his children, right? He fed them to the fires of Moloch, right? He gave them, he burned, they burned their children in the fire. What's the same thing abortion is? Baby murder, same thing, same thing. No, it wasn't exactly the same thing. Yes, it was exactly the same thing. Because no, nothing else but a devil leads you to pull out life that's inside of you and, and kill it. Nothing else but a devil worship leads you to do that. There, there isn't anything else to that. Like, like there's nothing. nothing. Is that plain enough? See, you want to look at that and say, well, that's not the same. It's like people tell me about a Christmas tree, the same thing. That's not the same thing. Well, if it's doing the same thing, I don't care what you call it. It's the same thing. You might call it something different, wonderful, but God already said what it was. So argue with him, not me. What I say to him, and they get mad. Uh, besides his sin, worthy made you to sin. Okay, they shed innocent blood 20 times in the King James Bible. Innocent blood is talked about 20 times, right? The shedding of innocent blood. They took advantage of the fatherless and the widow. They did violence with their hands. They took advantage of the most vulnerable people, right? So the fatherless and the widow, they were the most vulnerable of people, and they took advantage of them. They couldn't defend themselves, couldn't fight for themselves, right? So whenever you see a spirit of somebody like that, whenever you see them, like they, they, they really like to like pick on women like that, and they like to oppress them, and they like to do that, it, that's, that's the spirit they have. Right? There's a lot of men that'll mask that in religiousness and all that kind of stuff. And, 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 but I've seen it. I've seen those same men do that. And I, by the way, I've seen them be very violent men. But they come and they look like a lamb to you. Right? And, and like they act like they're not violent people. Right? And, um, and when, you, when you preach against that and you warn against that and you instruct them about what's right to do, they get mad at you, they turn on you, and they tell lies about you. Why? Well, because what they're doing in the dark, they're mad at you. Like they don't. Right? And they blame you for their marriage failing and all kinds of other stuff like that. Why? Well, it had nothing to do with what they were doing and the abuse that they were doing and things they were doing. It had to do with that preacher. It's always his fault. Sure it is. So they took advantage of the most vulnerable people. And by the way, this last one we're going to talk about too. Sexual sins were rampant. That's part of that. Remember rape and murder and incest and all those other things. You know, we're going to go to, uh, this is a depiction of Sodom, right? Here's those two angels. Look, they don't look like hippies. Isn't that great? Um, yeah. They, and uh, here's Lot trying to say, brethren, don't do this, please. And... Uh, and, and these two guys were like, okay, we're going to take care of them in a minute. Uh, we're going to fix them. Uh, you know, the Bible says they burned in their lust one toward another. And those angels were like, yeah, we're going to show them a burning here real quick. We're going to take care of their burning here real fast. Uh, the angels only came inside of there due to Lot. Those people couldn't have done anything to those angels. Yeah, they were going to stay in the street all night. They're like, no, we'll sleep here. We're cool. 
we'll get this party started quickly here. We'll get it get it taken care of right away. Genesis chapter 19, verse number one. You gotta understand God's holy. God hates sin, and he showed it in what he did to Sodom. Amen. He hates sin. I I, I would say you there's so many people again that want to apologize for God hating sin. God God hates sin. He's holy. He hates it. God's not gonna wink at it. He's gonna punish it. Genesis chapter 19, verse number one. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot it sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. See, Lot was a saved man. The Bible says he was a just man, right? So Lot knew holiness. Like he, he couldn't deny it. Whoa, I know who those guys are. By the way, I think it's really interesting when even if our signs are not out or anything, when we walk into those sodomite events or any of those events, those people look at us and they know exactly. Those people don't belong here. And then when we open our mouth, they really know we don't. Uh, but we belong there to preach to them, right? Uh, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. At Genesis 19, 2, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. See, I, it's a blessing that Lot pressed them, because that showed his, his spiritual love for God, and he wanted to do right. He, you know, they were guests of the Lord. He knew that they were sent from God, and he wanted them to be with him in the house. He was probably a little nervous as to what would happen to them, too, if they were out in the street, knowing that he was in the midst of Sodom, and it was the most wicked city, That's right. and they were some vile people. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. So they made him a feast, and the angels are, by the way, that proves to you that angels can eat, and they can sit, and they can fellowship, and they drank, and they did all those other things, right? So that, that proves to you that, that some of the, the, the uh, perceptions that people have of angels are not correct, because that shows you what they could do there. Genesis 19.4, here we go. But before they lay down, right? Sun's going down in Sodom, what's gonna happen? Perversion. Right? What they do, they do in the dark, don't they? But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, look at this, compassed the house round. Right? They, comp they surrounded the house. So these, these Sodomites, these homosexuals, they surrounded the house. Right. Right, exactly. Exactly what that is, right? But look what it says here both old and young kids children by the way you know it reminds me of northfield the teenagers when you go downtown and they're all like uh transgendered out and they're all they're all freaked out and weird and and telling you they're sodomites and they're like 10 years old it's like you don't need what do you know you're not you're 10. you're nothing you're 10 you're just a kid right you're not anything like that right but they're down there right and they're doing that. And look, and the, the old, they, they compass them about. Even the young were already taken in their minds and their hearts, right? They were already deceived. Children, this, this is the reason why we try to preach to you the Bible and tell you the truth, that you need to abstain from all appearance of evil, that you need to be saved by the grace of God, walking in the fear of the Lord, that you need the Holy Ghost of God to be in you, to help you to navigate through this life that we're living, because this is a wicked, vile world. It is a violent, vile world. That's what it is. A, a, an antichrist world that hates God. They have the spirit of the world in them. They have the spirit of antichrist. They have the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And sodomites are some of the most violent people you'll ever run into. And transgenders are the most violent people you will ever run into. They are violent. Oh, that's not very nice to say. No, it's not very nice to be violent and be a transgender. It's very wrong. And this is not a politically correct church. Here they go. The men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, the whole city. Could you imagine... It's like it would be like if the whole gay pride parade surrounded your house and circled it about, and they had a big old satanic circle, right? 
right? They compass the house round, right? So they're, they made a big old satanic sodomite circle around there, and they have intentions to rape those angels. Mm -hmm. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? See, they smelled purity. Like they, they, they knew it was there. They, they, they knew it. That's why they saw those men, that they weren't defiled men. And what's the first thing they wanted to do? Defile. That's what they wanted to do with innocency and purity. They wanted to defile it. By the way, that's why they want your school curriculum. That's why they want your children. That's why they, that, that, that's why they want to indoctrinate them. That's why they want to teach them all those things, because they want to destroy their purity and they want to confuse them. That's why I was reading uh, this week, they have an AI program uh, for, for children that they want to put out. And this AI program will basically tell a child whether they're, whether they're a sodomite or a homosexual or not. Like that computer program with an algorithm is going to dictate what your child does. Or influence it. Right? This is why you have uh, uh, places like Florida trying to uh, put their laws together about don't say gay or whatever. But really what the law is, is, is they're not allowed to go into the public schools and, and indoctrinate the children with that at a young age, right? And I get that, but I would just pull every single student out of public school and I'd let the whole thing rot down to the pits of hell. That's what I would let it do because it's nothing but a socialist system anyway. That'll make some people mad, but that's okay. That's what we do best. Uh, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compass the house round about, both old and young and the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Translation, they wanted to rape them. That's what that means. That's exactly what they wanted to do. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. <laughs> Lot shuts the door tight like you ain't getting in there. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Now, I think Lot was trying to be customary. But what he should have said is, look, you devils. But see, Lot still had some of that city in him. It took his strength away. He was a saved man, yeah, but he vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, didn't he? That's what Peter said. And he was saved, and God got him out of there. But I'll tell you what, Sodom didn't get out of his daughter's hearts. As you can see, that spirit of Sodom never left. What did his daughters end up doing? Getting their father drunk and committing incest. Mm-hmm. And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after them. He said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. By the way, these are the uncomfortable parts of the Bible that people don't want to preach. Talk about those things. Well, I'm going to talk about them. They need to be talked about. They need to be straightforwardly preached from the Bible. God's people need to hear these things. They need to be awakened to the truth of the depravity of this stinking wicked world. And things that, that are, and that, by the way, it, by the way, you fathers, I want you to understand something. I want to help you out with something. If you ever decide that you're going to get crossways with God or you're mad at the preacher, or you're mad at anybody else, and you get your family out of church and you allow the world and you go back into Sodom. Whoa, that was weird. Uh, you go back into Sodom and you let the world teach your children everything. You might come back out of that. They might not ever. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Might be sending that guy to Africa someday. Oh, wait. <laughs> and they called unto Lot. They said, Look what they said. By the way, Lot's daughters, it ruined them. It ruined them. Sin will ruin your children. It'll ruin, ruin them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. He said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. By the way, you think this had an inf impact on their decision that they made later? How perverse the thought process can be? 
This is violence. This is all violence here. Violence that begets more violence. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as good as in your eyes. And Lot's a saved man. By the way, did you know that saved men can be completely off their rocker sometimes and do some very foolish things? And say some very foolish things in the heat of the battle. Lot is in the heat of a very tense situation. But because he wasn't walking in faith and the lights of the city of Sodom um, tempted him, right? Attracted him. It influenced his decision making. Lot was getting ready. Look what he was getting ready to do. Oh, just take my daughters and do to them as good in your eyes. And only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So, in one way, Lot, Lot's judgment is so perverse that he wants to protect those men, right? He wants to protect them at the expense of, of giving his daughters away. I know. And, and, and all of us would really say we would never do anything like that. But we ought to examine the things that we do and make sure that maybe not the same thing, but that we wouldn't fall to something in the similar vein, Right? I'll give you an example of that. Uh, pastors can sacrifice their family. They may not do this, but they can sacrifice their family on the altar of having a bigger church or having more exposure or whatever being popular or whatever the case may be, right? And they can compromise their family and let their whole family go to hell while they're trying to win the world, like Billy Sunday did. Yeah. Traveling around the world and your own son falls to the same sin that you're, Right? And we're not, I'm not saying that can't happen to any of us. I'm not saying that. I'm saying on the contrary, be on your guard, be on your watch. But see, you know what I mean? Pastors can do that and then they ruin and they lose their whole family, right? Or you as men can go out and street preach against the atrocities and the wickedness of this world. And if you're not the father that you're supposed to be at home, your own children can fall for the same wickedness. Right. Now it's their fault. It's their sin, of course. But we have to examine ourselves and say, well, have we done this very thing? Is there any area in our lives where we're, where we're compromising like this or we're neglecting some things, right, in order to help save these two men and sacrifice our children? That's right, pragmatism. It's a dangerous thing, very dangerous thing. I pray you bring them out unto you and do ye to them as good as in your eyes, only unto these men do nothing, for therefore can they into the shadow of my roof. Well, I remember that violence. This is, this is something that we saw last year, right? We were out there and there was a whole gang of trannies. There's more than that. They came walking through with their blonde wigs and all kinds of other stuff. And they came walking through there and they had this big old fight, very violent. This is a, this is a boy. This is a young man. This is a girl. This is a sorry excuse for a man. Okay. This man told me that he was going to, Basically, when he tried to take the scripture sign from my son was holding the sign and I walked up there and he, he told me he was going to, you know, knock me out and do all kinds of other stuff to me and all that kind of stuff. If, if, because I was, you know, in his face, he kept coming around trying to get me, he kept coming, you know, he'd come around. Brother Paul came over there. Remember that when the sign was there, you're on video, Paul, you were, you're famous. Um, but uh, you, you, you stood there and, and, and kind of stood in between us for a while. And anyway, so these guys are getting into violent fights. Why? Because sodomites are violent. Transgenders are violent people. See, this won't be taught in your, in your military training class of sensitivity now that, you know, you have all those soldiers who go out and they, they have sensitivity class. And maybe some of you have been through sensitivity class where they, they taught you how to be sensitive to other, other uh, you know, uh, what's that? What's it called? Um, Desensitizing. Yeah, desensitizing them. Yeah, yeah. You have to have these sensitivity classes and everything else. Well, I can guarantee you, if I if I ever went to a sensitivity class, they would have to take me through it a few times because I'm going to fail it. Because I'll give them some sensitivity, all right. I'll give them the truth. That's sensitive. It's being sensitive to the truth. And you know what most people will say is, well, that's bigotry and hate. Well, you only say that because you're an ignorant fool that hates God. See, that's not very, and that also is not very pleasant to hear, right? But it's the absolute truth. And again, the authority is the scriptures. You don't have to like it, but it's God's word. And I don't expect you to walk around telling people that they're ignorant fools. 
<laughs> I'm just telling you, but that is, that is the duty that God's given me to preach the word and tell the truth about it, right? I have to tell it, right? It's ignorance and foolishness is all it is. That's what the fool says in their heart that there is no God, right? They hate God. They hate something they don't believe exists. So here they are. Again, this is a, this is a young man. That's a young man, sort of. Um, see the long hair and the, that, that's, that's the, the tranny. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the gang of trannies. They got into a fight. This guy was like dating this tranny, I think, or something. I don't know what was going on. I, well, not an, yeah, no. What happened was this guy got, a, this guy grabbed this transgender and made it mad and then it exploded on him and commenced to whooping him and he got beat by a little tranny boy. And that's embarrassing. What? It is. It, that's what happened. That's, and by the way, these guy, the, this was the man that threatened to beat me up. So then what happened was, as a result, these, these guys, and uh, yeah, they're all guys, these guys all got into a fight, and we just walked away. God gave them over to their own confusion, and we just walked right away. We'll see you later. Why? What were they mad about? Because we preached the gospel to them. Just like you get mad when you don't want to hear the truth. Only they get enraged by it. By the way, there's only two decisions you have to make. One is for Christ, and one is not. It's as simple as that. Genesis 19, 9, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. Look at the violence here. Just look at the violence. I want you to think about this. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? He was telling Lot, they were telling Lot, we're going to rape you worse than we're going to rape him. That's, that's what they said. And he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. They wanted to break the door down to get to them. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. By the way, that's, that, was, that was those angels. They had enough of that. They're like, okay, we're done. We're done. We're done with this. Amen. By the way, there's going to be a time when God shuts that door. Just like he did with the ark. God shut the door. There's going to be a time God shuts the door. And God's finished with that. Right? when that iniquity comes to the fullest, right? That's talked about in Daniel, right? God's going to deal with it. That's right. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great. So, you know, those little, like that, like these young transgender boys, same thing. God's going to do the same thing. By the way, it doesn't have to be that sin. Any sin that's upon you that Jesus Christ has never paid for because you've never repented and put your faith and trust in Christ alone for salvation, you're going to be judged with them because you are them. Without Christ, you are them. Without Christ, we are all them. We all would go to the same hell. Their sins are not in that sense, in the righteousness of God, their sins are no different. Your sins are no different, right? To a righteous, holy God. Now, God has a severe judgment on this earth for different sins, of course. But when it comes to eternity, God hates all sin. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they were weary. So they wearied themselves to find the door. So check this out. You think that, oh, well, after they got blinded, man, they ran. No, they didn't. They were beaten on that door to try to find it, but they couldn't see it. 
because they wanted to get in that door. Look at this. They wearied themselves to find the door. Why? Because this proves that judgment does not change someone's heart. Amen. Mm. Only Jesus can change someone's heart. Judgment doesn't. Jesus does. Hallelujah. So you have that rape and incest and you have all the crimes that were going on in Sodom. You have the reasons why God destroyed the earth. The Sodomites are not the only sinners that God hates. Uh, just a simple reminder, God hates fornication. He says it so in his word over and over again. And I'm going to show you that God hates bestiality. God hates pornography. God hates pedophilia. God hates all sins of, those, of that nature. By the way, all of those sins are practices of occult worship. All those sins are. Say, so what, what? No way. Nah. I've never done that. I've, I've never been into the occult. When you study the scriptures, all those sins are connected with rebellion and witchcraft. All of them are. Every single one of them. And the days of Lot and the days of Noah were riddled with those sins. And so is the world vastly approaching the times of normalcy for all evil. Think about it. Abortion is baby murder suicide at an all-time high, rape and incest are at an all-time high, fornication and divorce at an all-time high. Less people are getting divorced because less people are getting married. They're just living in sin. They, they don't care. Right? By the way, lest you weary your heart in thinking by thinking these heinous secret sins are new, consider these Bible verses that show us the depravity of man and his wickedness before the Lord. Just remember this one thing. You, you heard about these sins of religious people hiding their sin and, and Baptists and, and Catholics and all this pedophilia and all these other things. You think maybe those things are all new or maybe those things haven't went on that much or maybe those things. No, they, it, it's the Bible being proven true. Leviticus 18, 20, Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her, and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy, of thy God. I am the Lord. You know those people that are murdering their babies and having abortions, though that's, that is a cultic practice. They don't know it. They're deceived. But that is what it is. You say, well, I can't imagine that being that. Well, God says it. That's where God puts it. I didn't write it. God did. Here's Leviticus 18. Thou shalt not lie with, by the way, he says here, uh, uh, let's see, let's back this up. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. It's an abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before beasts to lie down there, thereto. It is confusion. Where does it come from? Satan. It's confusion. It's why? This, it's occultic practice. That's why. This is, what, this is what the occult does. That's why God put it in there. To warn you. It wasn't just for Israel. These things were written for our admonition and for our learning. Right? So God's going to show you, well, why in the world is this country, a great country like America that goes and wants to go liberate and drop democracy on everybody in the world, how come they can't stop babies from being burned alive and murdered, or, or, or being murdered and burned? Well, why can't, why don't they stop that? Well, why are they so appalled to go stop any death that happens over in Ukraine, but they watch millions of babies die here? And then they claim some moral high ground. And each party, the Republican and the Democrats, all work together and they all get paid to do what they're doing and they all get paid very well to do what they're doing. How come the guys that exposed Planned Parenthood went to jail and got felonies for doing it? Now, why in the world would that happen? Those guys went in there and exposed them selling baby parts and everything and then they find out, wait a minute, wait a minute, now hold on a second. I have a felony against me? And they're killing babies? How's that work? Well, that's called witchcraft. Yep. That's how that works. That's called witchcraft. And that's how witchcraft really works. Why is anybody stopping it? Because they don't want to. Because they got devils. And they work with devils. And it's a cult practice. 
That's what it is. I don't know about that. Really? Well, how come Biden isn't refused communion by the Holy Roman Catholic Church? Wait, I thought they were against abortion. and They're the most pro-life church ever. And they're against abortion. And well, why? Why wouldn't you? Oh, if you were the Pope and you were and you believed God and you were really the Vicar of Christ like you say you are, right? Then what would you do? You would say that that president is never allowed to touch a Roman Catholic church. Right. Why wouldn't you say that? Because you're not against it. Yes, they do. They say they are. I know when people tell you something, <laughs> you don't have to look and verify if they actually mean it, like live in it. You don't have to do that. You, they said it. That's enough. Right? They said it. That's enough. Well, that is enough for most, for most Americans that don't look deeper than the shallowest point of the pool. Right? And then they, they oh, just believe it. Here, let me throw money at it. That'll work. When, meanwhile, this is a cult practice. That's, that's what it is. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with womankind is an abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast. So we covered those things. There they are. By the way, defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Wait, so then God is saying that there's a lot of nations that practice this. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Israel was supposed to be different. That's why they were supposed to be called out by his name. That's why the Lord's churches are supposed to be different. We're not supposed to harbor these things. We are supposed to throw the bums out when they won't repent or when they prove to be themselves wicked and vile and they will not quit their sins. We don't give them cover. We don't transfer them somewhere else. We church them. We do it correctly. But by the way, also, we're not to support these people when they do what they do. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Is this just for Israel? No. He was talking about all those nations. These are principles for nations. Right? These are principles for nations. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you, and the land is defiled. By the way, you know why uh, this, this won't be fun. But God does things that are outside of human intervention, let's say, or human knowledge. What do you mean by that? Well, when the Indians ruled this area, they were cannibals, they murdered, they committed abominations, they, were, they practiced occult practices, they were killing, they were eating people alive, and they were doing all these things. And what did God do? He vomited them out of the land. He allowed another land to take them over. Now, before you wave the stars and stripes, just remember that same judgment is applied to us as well in that sense. That what have we done? We've murdered our innocent. We harbor occultic practices. We allow, we allow wickedness to reign in the nation. And what's God going to do? Probably vomit us out like he did the rest. Probably. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? So what's happening? Like all these illegal aliens and different people coming in across the borders and people doing all these other things and, and all this other stuff. Maybe God's going to use that. I mean, we certainly shouldn't, like, act like we have any high ground, right? But if you tell the truth like that, then you're not patriotic. Well, I'm not trying to be patriotic. I'm trying to be biblical. I'm going to another nation someday. I'm going up. I'm getting out of this place. This is not my home. I'm just a passing through. God just put me here to preach, to live for God, to serve him, and then go home. I'm not called to be loyal to them. I'm called to be loyal to Christ. 
and so are you. And if you ever get disillusioned by that, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because you're going to be chasing these people around, trying to, trying to compromise your conscience in order to do it. And it won't work, believe me. You'll have to hold your nose. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity upon them. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes. Joel 3.3, 3, And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. It's human trafficking. Not new. Not new. By the way, the demise of every major... Uh, civilization and nation has been this. The Roman, Roman Empire, what made them fall? Their lasciviousness and wicked incontinence. What made Greek fall? Greece fall? Same thing. What makes all those nations, all those civilizations, what's going to make this empire crumble? That same thing. You can't do things contrary to the scriptures and be violent like that and expect that God's going to wink at that. He's not going to. He's not going to wink at that. There's a judgment coming upon all, right? And all the, nations that, the, all the nations that forget God, right, shall be turned into hell. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God, right? Hey, that's Bible. You believe that still, right? Or do you believe the patriotic message that you're given? By the way, I, 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 I lost all that when I figured out what they really all were. And what they were all doing. I was like, I gave up on that dream. I was like, okay, that's over. Well, that nightmare is over. I woke up from that. By the way, the things that are done in the dark, I got to hurry. I'm almost finished. Ezekiel, I think. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse number 7. I want to remind you of things because sometimes you think, well, religious people are Christian. People that claim to be Christian, claim to be Baptists, they do things in the dark and that are wicked. And, and you know, that, that it's so heinous when we hear about those things that it disturbs us, right? Well, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse number 7, talks about the, th the same thing. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. God will give you a hole to see the door, to open it up, to see what wicked abominations they really do there. God will reveal that. Ezekiel 8.10, So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. It reminds me of like, if you walk the halls of Congress and you go inside those places or at Congress or, which be careful, you might get devils catching. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, you won't catch devils. I'm kidding. But uh, uh, you might, never mind. Uh, but <laughs> when, you, when you're in there and you're walking through there and you see all this stuff, you're like, oh, okay, well, what's this? Oh, that's that, that's that, that's that, that's that. Boy, these guys are a bunch of devils. That one guy was right when he said, you the devil, white man. Remember that guy on the street? <laughs> but uh, th that's what, what's up with all the occultic symbols everywhere? What's with all the naked statues of everything, the porn everywhere? Well, it's their God. It's what they do. It's what they believe. It's, they only do. By the way, again, simple concept. I'm a Christian. I only do what I believe. Right? Lord willing, by faith. Right? By God's strength. They're lost people. They only do what they believe. They, right, that's, that's just what they do. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. In the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. So you, they had their Roman Catholic stuff with them, right? Their spirit of Babylon stuff. They got all their, by the way, see pictures of the Vatican. All that stuff's on the walls. <laughs> They're doing that. People say, well, is Vatican, is, uh, is uh, Babylon Israel? Yes. Is Babylon Rome? Yes. It's a spirit. It travels. It's, it's, it's this world. It doesn't matter what nation is. Is American military, is that Babylon? Yes. Amen. Yeah, yes. All of the above. It's a spirit. Right? It's a spirit. Those rogue Jews work with the Jesuits, they work together. There's the right hand, there's the left hand. I know that's just crazy conspiracy stuff, I mean. 
tomorrow with you anyway. Ezekiel 8, 12. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Right? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things are where they, as, as they were in the beginning. Right? That's what they say, right? They count the long suffering of God that God's not going to do anything, right? That's how they count it. But what, what, what does this teach us here? What's this lesson here? Don't chamber wickedness in your heart, in your mind. Put it down. The first, the first, um, the first rousings of sin in your heart, put it down by, the, by Jesus. Put it down. Cast down the imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Cast it down right away. Why? Because if it's cast, it, cast down in the hearts, it'll never come out in the actions. Put it down in the heart, it'll never go any further. Right? Put it down in the mind. None of you shall approach to any that is near kin to him to uncover their nakedness. By the way, this is the same sins that they were guilty of, the incest. The incest. incest. Uh, the nakedness of thy father, the nakedness of thy mother, shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife, so the Bible's speaking of incest there. Uh, the nakedness of thy sister, the nakedness of thy son's daughter. You get the point. The Bible is telling you specifically that these sins were sins that were in the world. But listen to what the Bible warns us of in Re Revelation 9.21. By the way, those days of violence, same thing in the end. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries. Doped up people. Doped up. That sorceries has to do with the, the pharmacia, right? It has to do with that. It's, it's more than that, but, it's, but it encompasses that as well. They're, they're filled with it, right? They're taking medicine. They're taking drugs. They're all jacked up on drugs. So then comes the fornication, then comes the thefts. Right? That's what the Bible tells us is coming, right? These days of Noah, these days of violence, that's what we're in right now. We're seeing it, right? By the way, let me give you a quick definition of fornication. The incontinence or lewdness of unmarried persons, male or female. Also, the criminal conversation of a married man with an unmarried woman. Wow. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Pretty powerful, isn't it? By the way, the Bible war tells you that you better be careful how you speak. Amen? Amen. Right? Adultery. Incest is covered in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Remember the man that wanted his father's wife, right? Now, that wasn't his real mother. The Bible doesn't say that. But the point is, the concept is still there, right? It's still there. It's still a problem. Uh, adultery. Jesus said, in your heart, if you lust after a woman, you're guilty already. I don't think there's any man alive that can say, I've never done that. If they do, they're probably lying. Now, it isn't anybody's business what you've done in your heart, but between you and the Lord, right? But... The point is that any man or woman, by the way, it doesn't have to be the lust of fornication. It can be the lust of envy and covetousness. That can consume you just as any other, any other lust can. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. God hates that sin. God hates it. So, so you're guilty of it already. God hates fornication. That's in all forms. It's violence. By the way, it's covered under violence. That was the days of Lot, the days of Sodom. That's, that's what it was, right? Um, Pornography is the same as fornication. By the way, some people say this the other way around. I'll say it this way. The Greek actually agrees with the King James, right? <laughs> that word pornea defines as being generally every kind of extramarital, unlawful, or natural intercourse, right? Right? But the Bible, that's why the Bible uses, the, the King James uses the perfect word fornication. Why is that? Because it covers everything. It covers everything. All of it. It covers adultery. It, cover, it covers, which John MacArthur, if he had a Bible, he would understand that. But he teaches something perverse to that and says that there's no such thing as divorce. And the reason he says that is because he doesn't believe that fornication is covered under adultery when he's using a different definition because he doesn't have the right Bible. Anyway, uh, that'll help some people out. So the Bible warns us to repent of violence, to repent of all fornication, to hate even the thoughts of it. Hate it, brother. Hate it, sister. Hate the thoughts of it. You know, the safest way to never fall into the, these sins, any of these sins, whether it be the most grievous acts, which are all grievous to God, the, the best way to, to, to keep from that is to pour your heart out to God. 
It's to pour your heart out to God. Everything you've ever feared, every sin you've ever committed, now if it's under the blood now, you don't have to do that, but every sin that you've ever committed or every fear that you have, the absolute most, the most terrible fear that you ever have in your mind that you could commit, the most heinous acts in the world that might go through your mind, you take those all and you pour them out to God and hide nothing from Him. Keep nothing from God. Keep the way clean, right? Keep the way clear. Let nothing between my soul and the Savior. Nothing between, right? Keep, keep a sweet and short account, right, of those things. Put your heart, pour your hearts out to God that violent fornication or any of those acts never take place in your life. And you're right. you say, I don't think I'd ever do that. There's a lot. Many strong men have been slain by her. This is what the Bible says in Proverbs. Many strong men have been slain. Many mighty men have been slain by her. That's what the scriptures say. So I, none of us are above sin. None of us are above being tempted, right? Temptation is not sin. Yielding to it is. The Bible warns us about that. These days of violence that were in you taken, you pour out your hearts to God. Tell him everything. Leave nothing out. Ask his forgiveness and strength and mercy to keep you. You know, the first thing I did, one of the first things that I did when I heard that terrible news the other day, I went and I walked for about an hour and I prayed. And I, and, and, and I just prayed, Lord, don't ever let me fall into anything like that. Anything near that. Don't ever let me fall into anything like that. With tears, right? Weeping and, and, and crying out to God at different times I've done that. To, to, why? Because I don't want to fall into sin. You say, well, that makes me suspicious of you. Well, I don't care. You can be suspicious as you want. But I'm just telling you the truth. That's what God showed me to do, to take heed lest I fall. To pray against sins. To pray against fornication. To pray against those things. Right? To pray against that adultery. To pray against those. I hope you do that. I hope you pray against those sins. I hope you, I hope you don't think you're above anything or uh, above being caught up in anything or being deceived or being tempted or anything like that. Because strong temptations of different things will come to every man. They're very unique temptations that come to people. And you and I have to pray against those things. We have to take those to God and pour our hearts out to God in communion. We have to weep to God. By the way, if you'll make yourself a fool before God in your prayer closet, God won't make you look like a fool before men. You understand that? See, when you, when you confess and repent of your sins before God and the things that you fear like that and, and your sins and whatever else it is, then God will not allow you to be taken by those. But when you go at, go at yourself and you think that you can get away with it and you think that you are strong and you don't, you don't have to go to God and you'll, you'll be fine, you're, you're more than likely in for a fall. We're ne on this earth, we're never safe until we get home. You are on enemy territory. You are in danger constantly. And you're in the most danger when you think you're in none. Amen. You're in the most danger when you think everything's fine. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> the days of Noah were very dark days. They were full of fornication, murder, violence. And so shall the days of the coming of the Son of Man be. You know, Noah was repairing that ark, right? In the end, though, and I'm done. Boy, I went long, but praise the Lord. Saying, I have sinned. Judas said this the last time innocent blood was mentioned in the Bible. It's Jesus' blood. Isn't that something? How about that? Saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to it. See thou to that. See how they didn't care about the blood of Jesus, did they? The 20th time that's mentioned. That number 20, this is from Pastor Hoggard, I thought it was interesting, is based on the number two. He said, in my studies, it represents the two days, 2,000 years of the time of the Gentiles with our, with our two witnesses, Old Testament and New Testament. He said, consider Joseph, who married a Gentile bride and had two sons. 200 penny worth, not sufficient to feed the 5,000 Jews, meaning they would not be saved during the time of the Gentiles, which is true, right? Uh, Joshua commanded Israelites to follow behind the Ark of the Covenant 2,000 cubits, meaning they, meaning they follow Christ after 2,000 years from Golgotha. Isn't that interesting? That'll be something to see. Those are those days of Noah and days of violence. Now listen, friend, you better follow the Lord. You better know the Lord. You better have a deep and intimate walk with the Lord. That innocent blood that was shed for you is able to cover all your sins. Amen. 
The Bible says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus' blood covers all sin. I don't care what you've done. It could be the most heinous and wicked things in this whole world. But Jesus came to save the vilest of sinners. And he is well able to do so. If you'll come to him and trust him as Lord and Savior, he'll save your soul and he'll forgive your sins and he'll wipe them out. He'll wipe them all away. And if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, then you better go to him daily. He is your high priest that can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. For he was all po in all points tempted like as you are, yet without sin. Go to Jesus. Go to your high priest. Have him to intercede for you daily on your behalf. Bombard the throne of God with prayer. Seek God's face. Have him strengthen your heart and your life to teach you to be the Christian that you ought to be, to help you to navigate through this life of, of violence, these days of violence and temptation and wickedness that are going to come over the, all the earth. The Lord is able to keep you. The Lord is able to sustain you. The Lord is able to make you stand. Amen. Glory to God. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you. And we thank you for all that you do for us. We just pray that you'd Please help us to take it to heart. And Lord, the ones that are not saved, may they fall today on their knees in repentance and faith in Christ alone to forgive their wicked hearts of their sins, to confess them and turn to Jesus alone for eternal life, who is well able to save them. Thank you, Jesus, for changing me all those years ago. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the blood atonement that was made, that your innocent blood was shed for my guilty soul. Thank you, Lord. Please. Help us, Lord, to keep a short sin account. Help us to bring every thought, every trial, every tribulation, every fear, every anxiety, all of our anxiety, Lord, all of our pain and suffering and grief, to bring it to the cross, to bring it to Christ and leave it there. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving sin. Thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for all this in eternity, too. We praise your name, Lord, and we thank you for your grace. Lord, bless this time we have together. Bless the food, bless the fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.